Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to a very special Murders at Karlov Manor draft here on the channel. Today, we are joined by a very special guest. He is a Pro Tour Hall of Famer. He is a Pro Tour champion. He is one of, if not the best drafters of all time. It's Ben Stark. Welcome back to the channel. Hey, Nikolai. How you doing? I'm <laughs> doing great. It's really nice to have you. I know you've been drafting this format a lot, especially to prepare for the Pro Tour. Uh, what do you think of it? Yeah, I have uh, it's it's all right. It's got pluses and minuses. I mean, I think um, the color imbalance, like most people think, is pretty bad. I think white is very good. Green is okay to good. Blue and black are tough. Um, but I do like some of the main mechanics. I think both collect evidence and um, disguise are cool mechanics. Mm -hmm. I've pretty much always liked more formats. Like I played the original. I'm so old. I played on slot back in 2003. <laughs> And like champion, uh, sorry, cons a little bit more recently. Yeah. Um, did Did you play cons? I did. I've played cons a decent amount, both in paper and uh, my very first draft format that I like played in paper was Dragons of Tarkir, which is also a morph format with Mega Morph. Uh, so right. morph formats are kind of. I like I like the face down cards. They just feel natural seeing them on the battlefield. <laughs> it's always yeah. a bit of a puzzle. Yeah, they provide a lot of interesting decisions because, I mean, if you know you have a good morph, uh, do you want to trade it off on turn four or risk mm -hmm. it? You know what I mean? Like maybe your opponent has something on tap that can trade and you have to decide, do I attack or do I not? They might block, they might not. And you get a sense of what your opponent's creatures are from what they do. And then you yeah. decide whether you use a removal on it or to use it on something else or whether to set up blocks or whether you can win or lose a race. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of information games and a lot of like strategizing around face down creatures. Yeah, especially so when I, there's multiple. It's like, which one do I kill? The one they played first or the one they played second? Where it's like, all of a sudden, you have to like balance your range of not always playing your best one first or not always playing it second. It's always interesting. Yeah, exactly. I was uh, telling that uh, somebody I coached last week on our session when they were like, you know, so do I play? That's exactly what came up. They were like, do I play my better morph first or my better morph second? And I was like, well, the thing is, if you always do the same thing, then that's to your opponent's advantage. So you actually, mm -hmm. the general, like the baseline is to play your uh, weaker morph first because there's an extra turn the creature can trade off. But like mm -hmm. maybe 20% of the time you want to play your better morph first because your opponent's expecting your weaker morph first, so they're going to save mm -hmm. their removal, and they're likely going to kill your second morph and your first. So, yeah. like, you want you want to like kind of balance your range in poker terms there, mix it up yeah. a little, and I, yeah, and and just deducing what people have from all the plays, and then figuring out whether you're going to go for more of a value game or a race, depending on what you think their morph is. I just I find that all to be very strategic, so I like yeah. that. Exactly. I like that they've added Ward 2 to them as well, because it feels like you're a little bit safer when you play them. You don't always have to like worry about it just getting shocked or something. Yeah, they needed to do that. Um, you know, there's a world where they don't need to do that, where the power level is much lower of all the cards, and I may prefer that world. But in the current world where, you know, creatures are the size they are and removal is what it is, you do need to add more to them for them to be like kind of active and serviceable and i mean you know you can tell when wizards got something right versus when they get something wrong based on how good it feels in game right mm -hmm. when your opponent plays a three mana disguise creature it's not like oh my god that feels so good i'm gonna lose nor is it like unplayable right it just yeah. feels like awfully fair and on par with the other cards so yeah. overall you know the it's a high power set like all like every set these days and like you know cards do a lot you know a, like a common like you know the green loxodon forming a three three make a clue yeah like, i that card's yeah. insane to me every time i see it yeah like when i see a card like that i think oh my god like this card's so good but then i play with it and i'm like okay it's good but it's not like anything special because like all the cards are good right like the cards mm -hmm. just do so much so yeah. like you know, giving the point I'm trying to make in a kind of long winded way is that in order to kind of have all the cards be like pretty comparable where they can interact with each other and you could have good games, uh, I think it, Disguise uh, with Ward 2 was correct. Now, yeah. I'd like to live in the world where that Loxodon is a 2 2 and, you know, like the, yeah. everything else is a little smaller and weaker, and then the Ward mm -hmm. creature doesn't need uh, i mean the disguise creature doesn't need ward and yeah. then everything is balanced but that's not the world we live in yeah speaking of new world stuff right before before getting to the draft what do you think of the change to draft with the play boosters like you said you've been playing forever in terms of draft you played the original morph format and now you're seeing this 
shift in play boosters versus like the old booster pack we used to have for so long. What do you think of the change? I don't think it's as big a deal as uh, people are making it out to be. I mean, Mm -hmm. there is a little bit more rares per pack. It's not like we went from one rare per pack to three rares per pack. We went from Mm -hmm. one rare per pack to like 1.3 rares per pack. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't say that's positive. I think, like, generally speaking, commons and uncommons that don't dominate the game but have cool synergies and trade off with each other and so on are what makes limited great. So I would say it's probably not a positive. But at the same time, if they design with that in mind properly and they make the rares a little less busted, a little more rares that are designed for standard but not good in limited type cards, Mm -hmm. then it could just balance out and be basically the same. So I definitely am not with um, any sky is falling people, nor do I think this is positive. I think overall, I don't, when I say it's not positive, I'm speaking strictly from a booster draft, seal deck, limited magic perspective. I have no idea what's best for maximizing revenue for game stores or the growth of magic long term. You know, I'm I'm Mm -hmm. coming from I'm not I don't understand those things properly, right? I have I have opinions, but like yeah, (laughs) I'm speaking on the old from the perspective that I am an expert on, which is just limited play or whatever. Yeah, you know, growing magic or whatever. But from a perspective of limited play, I don't think it's a positive. I think some of the cards on the list are kind of absurd. But most of them aren't. They did a decent job with it. Yeah. And as far as just having like more rares and more uncommons, I don't think that makes limited better. But I also think it's pretty minor and drafts still great. How about yeah. you? What you? I I'm gonna jump us in the queue while I answer. I think it's been pretty like medium. Like I don't think it has had a huge impact, as you said. People tend to overreact to these sorts of things. And I'm kind of like, okay, if it's better for game stores and helps draft keep going in the future, I like that. I think that the way they shifted their design philosophy a- along with play boosters isn't at, is not like hit or miss potentially because they their goal was to make every card more playable. And in doing so, I feel like some of the cards, like combat tricks that draw you a card always like are interesting to me because it feels like it punishes you for blocking when a combat trick is kind of like, in my mind... Uh, almost like a removal spell for aggressive decks that can leverage them rather than, oh, I'm going to get a two for one with my combat trick. That just feels odd to me. Um, Yeah, yeah. When you start to get into doing that for two mana too, like usually you have to pay three mana for that. So like, like for example, I don't think the chase is on is too problematic because you get a clue and they have to pay two more mana for that. So if you're in an aggro deck, you're paying five mana to to two for one. But but like, you know, the two mana plus two plus two white. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. You can't block their two drop. You can't block their morph on turn two, on turn three, or they can double spell because they can play like on turn four. They can play that card and a two mana creature and they're up a card and they're on a board. That feels a little much. I think that ability should cost three mana, not two mana. Yeah. I agree. I think they'll, they'll, they'll keep honing that though. Okay. We're into the draft. Let's open something good. Okay. (laughs) Well, we opened something. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Niv's interesting. I played with him once. He was actually pretty good if I when I had the case of the shattered pack, but I don't think we're gonna first pick him if we're trying to win. Yeah. What are you look looking for in this pack? Like what, what cards stand out to you? Yeah, I mean like obviously five color fixing is good in this format, but Niv is just not that great a play payoff. Yeah. Like obviously you'll play it if you're five color, but he- hexpit for multicolor, most of the removal is one color, so it's just not yeah. but a five mana six six flyer that will like draw a card when it hits is fine. I think Coerce the Kill is one of the best uncommons. I don't really yeah. like Blue Black, but I think you can do a grindy Blue Black. I'm not opposed. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Case of the Pilfered Proof more than most people, I think. There's a lot of detectives. If you start with it, you can just draft like an all-detective type, red, white, blue, white type deck. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Co- Coerce to Kill was my pick here. Yeah, uh, It's very splashy. So yeah, that's like, what I've, I, I, I've played this card a lot, and I have not played Blue Black just straight up with this card only. It's just like always yeah. a splash in a green deck. It's su- super easy to fit in. Exactly. Like, I'm, I'm willing to draft Blue Black. Like, if we see Blue Black, I'll, I'll try and make a Blue Black Detectives grindy work. But if we go green or if we go, you know, black white, we'll just grab a, like, a tunnel or whatever and we'll splash yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this pack, Reckless Detective is one of a card that I like. <laughs> Uh, and then there's like agent, I guess there's red herring for people that like that thing. This pack seems really bad to me. <laughs> it's bad for us. I mean, yeah, reckless detectives, a good two drop. I would definitely take it over red herring. I like red herring. I take them pretty aggressively, but, um, I think reckless detectives just better. 
And then unscrupulous agent would be the card for us, which, you know, is a fine playable, but you're not second picking it. Like, that would be too bad. So yeah. I think I would take Reckless Detective. I think Red Blue is fine. Red Black's pretty bad, but if that's what we see, I'll you know, we can try. But yeah. we could, you know, it's pick two of the draft. Course to Kill is a very good card, but we're not playing Blue Black. If we get a good white card pick three, we just have to go into Boros if it's open, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, and there's another coerce to kill. Uh, there's also meddling youth in red white. There's Bullrack Clan Basher, which is a card that I somehow have never played. I just don't oh, think it's I take incredible. it very highly. It's no, it's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. Like literally on turn five, whenever they block, you eat their creature and deal them some damage, and then like it threatens lethal at all times with a pump spell. Bullrack Clan Basher is a really good card. It's like coerce to kill. It's one of the best on commons, along oh. with coerce to kill. So I think so. It. I haven't looked at the win rate data over the past. Yeah, few days, I, but... I I don't look at the win rate data at all. So I'd be willing to believe this card is great, and I just have not yeah. taken it highly. I think enough. this is a pick between only those two cards. Now we might take worse to kill. We have, I mean, I think that card's great too. We have two yeah. of those, yeah. but I would I would take only either Bullrack or Coerce to kill here. Okay, I'm down to take Bullrack. It's a little bit more flexible. I feel like this is like still is kind of a splash thing. And once you're splashing two cards, it's a little bit harder to get the mana to work sometimes. Sure. Okay, so now there is Fuss and Bother. There's Case of the Filched Falcon. I guess there's Projector Inspector. That's another card that's pretty performed well. Yeah, um, it's a solid card. You know, loot away lands while being efficient enough. Yeah, I mean, I like I like Fuss Bother quite a bit as long as you can make the Thopters. Like mm -hmm. once in a while, you get a real blowout with Fuss, but like most of the times you don't, right? Yeah. Like maybe twenty five percent of the games, Fuss is awesome. So, like, mm -hmm. if you can't play Bother, a card like this is not playable. But, it, like, don't put this in a red aggro deck that doesn't have white or blue mana. But, okay. like, if you can play Bother, then you just have this, like, backup. Because, like, all of the games where that doesn't line up probably don't have a million creatures out. You drew, like, five, six, seven lands. And then you just play Bother, and you get three one ones and Surveil 2, which is a good late-game card. So yeah. I, I find the card to perform pretty well, as long as you can play both halves. But you mm -hmm. must be able to play both that. Well, you must be able to play uh, Fuss. You must be able to play Bother to play Fuss. You can yeah. play Bother without being able to play Fuss in like a blue black deck or something. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I have gotten wrecked by Fuss a couple times and gotten wrecked by Bother a couple times where the three one ones are just like, oh my gosh. Like they were all like plus one, plus one or something and I was just like dead. Okay, in this pack, I kind of like Scene of the Crime. There's like Slice from the Shadows as well. Um, what yeah. do you want to take? Yeah, those are fine. I, I can see taking scene because we already have a splash. Um, Slice and Bubble Smuggler are both commons. I'm always happy to play in my deck. We're not really missing anything. But if we end up any combination of red, blue, black, which we probably will, I would potentially play Bubble Smuggler or Slice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now there's Chases on, which we were discussing. There is uh, Sanitation Automaton as a two drop, uh, Orangutan. I like actually that. like Crime Novelist. Um, you know, Red Blue especially makes the most clues, I think. And, like, mm -hmm. it's pretty easy. Like, if you sack one thing, this is a three mana two four that gave you a mana back. If you sack a second thing, it's just a really good card. And there are a few cards it has really good synergy with, like the four mana two three that makes a Thopter every turn. Plus, okay. like, when you just start with this kind of stuff, you just prioritize your clue making. Like, we already have Reckless Detective and Crime Novelist. It's what Blue Red does. Like, I'm, I'm going to try and draft around it. I like it. And now there's Treacherous Greed, which is kind of off in the middle of nowhere for us. Knife, which is, I guess, a clue. There's Analyst. What do you want to take? Yeah, not great cards here for us. I'd probably take Analyst. It's just a good two-drop yeah. for a blue red deck. You're looking yeah. to make a lot of clues. You draw cards on your turn plenty of the time. And yeah. uh, Analyst is kind of, you know, it's not a good card, but it's like a, there aren't a lot of good two-drops in this format. And, like, it's mm -hmm. a very solid two-drop for a blue red. Yeah, I agree. This pack classic on the job making a clue always is like why does this make a clue it's so brutal to me yeah. every time someone does that to me or i do it to someone else um there's just this pack is kind of weak as well another treacherous yeah, there's greed wrong with puzzle nut. there's nothing wrong with it it's not a great card but if you're doing the blue red sack artifacts thing you get your card when it comes into play then you sack it for profit and you get you know something profitable or a card if you paid the three you know yeah. so like overall not a great card but a card i'm happy to include in a blue red use my artifacts deck mm-hmm Niv is it wheel Niv is it wheeled shocking. I know everyone's surprised. Uh what do you want to take? Just rage? Yeah, just rage. We're we're not doing five color. You know, we're doing black, red, splash, blue, or or uh, red, blue, splash, black. We're definitely we, we can't use Niv Mizzet. I mean yeah. we could maybe take Medler, but I, Rage is probably the right pick. 
obviously our deck is not like some super aggro deck that really cares about rage, but it's still like a solid trick to play one of. Yeah, it goes yeah. well with Bullrack, Clan Basher, just give it five power, hit him for ten. Yep, or just let her reckless detective attack into a three three, get one more loot of a land away, whatever. Yeah. So. These last packs don't have a ton of great cards in them. So Yeah, I don't mind Jetsum Flotsam either. Um, you know, it's kind of like these split cards where like Jetsum's not an amazing ability for six, but you're happy to play it, right? If you have six million and you do that in the late game, you're getting a good card. And then the games where you're stuck on two, three, or four, and that would be a big liability, you just get to cycle it basically. So, like, yeah. I'm not saying it's a good card, but it's fine. I, I feel like split cards that have, like, a half that's good when you're stuck on four and a half that's good if you drew six or seven lands, those tend to overperform because you rarely draw draw perfectly in limited. Some games you get stuck on, like, four. Some games you draw seven, eight lands. So when I have a card that can work either way, like both Fuss Father and Jetsam Flotsam, I tend to value those pretty highly for the Flotsam. Yeah. yeah. So going into pack two... First of all, what do you want to take out of this pack? And then second of all, what kind of direction do you think you want to take our, our deck towards? Yeah, I don't know. Robbery is pretty good. Um, it's a way to not have Flood be a problem if we do like a black-red removal type grindy deck. Not a deck I really like, but um, otherwise out of this pack, we're taking Escape Tunnel, I guess. Or like Scene of the Crime, probably Escape Tunnel. Which like we yeah. kind of need yeah. if we're going to splash, so there's nothing wrong with. But like... Uh, robbery is a really nice finisher for grindy decks with removal so yeah. i think like we already we already have a scene of the crime we want more obviously fixing but i think we just take robbery and see if if what's open i mean nice. the way i see our deck at this point is we're definitely red right red is our best color by a lot yeah. and then we could yeah. play either black or blue and the other maybe on splash obviously mm -hmm. robbery is not splashable but of course the kill is so i mean we can do like a black red splash blue or we could do like a black a, a red blue splash black maybe we could even still do a black blue like our red is our best color but it's not the end of the world if we lose it yeah cause like there's a lasav here which goes perfectly into like a blue black type deck yeah i definitely want to take lasav here i mean murder is like playable shock is like playable i think lasav is actively very good yeah I agree. And uh, even, if, even if we're going to splash, this isn't like a card you have to play on turn two. I mean, we, mm -hmm. our deck's going to have a bunch of removal and stuff. We can play this on turn five, and then if they leave up a blocker, kill it, attack, and make a clue. Like, I'm I'm playing Lazav, whether it's off my light blue splash or my light black splash, or whether I'm blue black. Either way, I'm putting Lazav in our deck for Grixis. Yeah. yeah. Our deck is kind of just all Grixis cards, which is kind of interesting. Just... I feel like they're all relatively equal at this point almost. Here there's yeah. interrogators, person of interest, dramatic accusation. I mean, person of interest is certainly the best of those cards. Um, you know, interrogator's not great. It's like the six it's like Jetson Flotsam, but without the two mana half for when you when you're stuck on yeah. three or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not saying it's unplayable, but it's not good. And dramatic accusation is pretty bad removal. The removal in this format that doesn't say can't be countered, so you have to pay the extra two mana on disguised creatures. It's sorcery speed, so you can't like kill a creature in combat when they undisguise it. Is pretty bad. Like I'm not even sure dramatic accusation is really playable, to be honest. Interesting. Yeah, I usually just put it on stuff after it's flipped. Um, right, but then they also got that one hit where they eat your creature in combat, or they hit for five, or they investigate it. I don't mind a murder for that reason because you can anticipate when there's going to be a big combat where they on on morph on disguise. But like if it's sorcery speed and only kills a, an on disguise creature, I'm I'm not a fan. Yeah, I'm gonna take eliminate the impossible here. Yeah, but yeah, good trick. That that card always owns me. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's a good trick. If we're black red, we won't splash for that. But if we go blue red or blue black, we'll definitely ha be happy to have that. Yeah. Now this pack, there's exit, chase is on. We're not playing snuffler, stalker, fixing. I like stalker, but I'm also not sure what our splash is or anything. So I'd probably take shady informant because that's gonna work like for us no matter what. Yeah, that's black fair. or. You know, it's not black and red, it's black or red. So yeah. it's just like yeah. it's gonna be easy for us to cast and definitely yeah. playable. Yeah. Just a nice solid addition to any deck. Ooh. Hello. Hello. Pick six. I mean wow. this is the reward of playing the bad colors, right? Because like there is no question that white is the best color. I think green is the second best color, red's probably third. Like blue and black are the weak colors of the format. So as a result, you can get a Lazab third or fourth pick, you can get a course to kill seventh pick, sixth pick, whatever, because people aren't trying to play blue black. It's the worst colors in the format. Yeah, that's like the classic draft is self-correcting vibe where it's why you don't force colors and stuff. Like we're getting 
seventh pick soul enervation which is just a good card i really yeah. like this one similar yeah, it's to what solid it's solid i mean again it's another one of those removal spells i mean this one does have flash so you can use it in combat when they on disguise but it's a little expensive for the disguise format it's not that efficient but i like i like the other ability you will drain for two usually yeah. after you play that over the course yeah. of the game that's not yeah. nothing some extra life gain goes a long way oh my and now there's a murder and a fairy snoop and a cold case cracker this is actually an interesting pick yeah, I mean, I think Murder, given we don't have a lot of removal, is probably better than those two, which are both solid playable commons, but nothing exciting. But I do want to reiterate, like, if I have four Murders, I might only play two or three. Like, it's not some, it's not what it was in some previous formats, you know? But yeah. at the same time, if I don't have a lot of removal, I am happy to have one Murder in my hand in the game so that I can have a turn six or seven where they attack and block and they on disguise and I get them with Murder and I kill some yeah. big creature, you know? Now, scene of the crime wield. That's pretty nice. Yeah, that's a nice pickup. Our deck is coming together. What colors do you think we are right now? Like black, red, splashing blue? Oh I mean, gosh. I think that's how we would use most of our cards. Like if we wanted to use the most of them. I do think if we played basically just blue, black, we would have most of our good cards. Yeah. Like the only red card we lose is Bullrat Clan Basher. That's like actively very good. So I think we should be trying to do a two color blue, black. But if we keep getting good red, then we probably have to do what you said, a red, black, splash, blue. And then we get to play all our cards. Yeah. I guess the only good red cards we have are this and the Clan Basher and then yeah. kind of Fuss Bother. So like we don't actually even have like any crazy... Right, um, but those cards aren't splashable, and like yeah, you know, we yeah. can splash those off in two coerced to kills. So like, I would look for a blue black, but also we could be red black splash blue, and then we would get to use like all our good cards. Yeah, but hunted bone brood is pretty good. Just play face down, yeah. flip it face up. Just it's pretty good, yeah, pretty solid. The blue, him. the blue red card is probably better, but I, we'd have to splash for it presumably. Yeah, I've had a deck that had four gleaming gear drakes before because I think the person next to me was playing red, but they weren't playing blue red, and so they just kept passing these. It kind of wrecked my draft, to be honest, because I love this it's card. It's a really good card. I just don't know if we want to do blue, red, splash, black or not, because then we would lose yeah. murder and robbery and so on. Yeah, I think um, this card's great. Yeah, Bone Brute's good. I like Bone Brute. I would take it over murder here. Okie doke. Wow, and now we get Long Goodbye, Cornered Crook. <laughs> ever, yeah. The only time I've ever heard the word crook used is Richard Nixon. <laughs> just, I'm a not crook. a crook. Your is not a crook, yeah. Um... <laughs> Long long goodbye is good. Long goodbye is efficient. It's uh, it hits those disguised creatures for yeah. and you blow the mana. And when it's an instant, that matters a lot. I don't think people realize how much it matters that if you're on the draw on turn two, you have your two mana up, you didn't draw a two mana creature to play, they play their three drop and you kill it end of turn. Now it's like you're on the play and you have an extra card in every one of your turns. You know, yeah. like when a card like this is a sorcery, it's not that good because then on your turn two, you can only kill their two drop or on turn three, you can kill their three drop for two mana, but then what are you going to do with the other mana, right? It's like the yeah. same as if it was three. But when it's an instant and you can go on the draw, end of your turn kill your three drop with my two mana card on tap play a three drop of my own like i said that's huge now it's like you're on the play but you have an extra card in your hand yeah 100 percent. 100 percent. now there's galvanize extract the confession go, go well around. i think we're doing black blue so i would just yeah, take extract. I agree. I agree like our red stuff was fine but it looks like we're gonna be able to put together a two color black control deck using like you know almost all our good cards yeah and being I, able to cast her to lazav more often yeah we could have had three cards to kill so sad it's okay out cold basilica stalker sanguine okay. savior isn't really a card to play but it's playable it's okay yeah it's crazy that there's a shock this late too it's like red as well yeah. i mean yeah. red black splash blue is still an option if we want to do that i know i was just saying i think we're settling on blue black but i mean i just don't think we have as many good red cards like Bus isn't really good for our control deck. This is like the only yeah. red card. I really like Blacks are best color. Yeah, blacks are our best color. It's just a question of whether, you know, black, red, slash blue to use it all or black, blue and have better mana. I, I, I mean, I'm good with the out cold. I'm, I'm, I'm just worried we could happen to see good red cards after this because it feels like red's pretty open. But at this point, black is like our best color for sure. There's a deadly complication. We can definitely just splash this if we want. Um, it's fine. Um, if we're not going to do a red splash, then obviously we're not going to play public thoroughfare. If we're going to do a red splash, then we need to pick up the tri land here while we have the opportunity. But yeah, if you I just want to do two color black blue, then yeah, take the out cold. Yeah, I don't think we're going to splash. Uh, we just like, don't need the, the 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 cards we would splash just aren't really necessary. It feels like I feel like we have all our bases covered. Okay. Yeah, it's it's better not to. I mean, I'm not I'm not against it. You know. Yeah. I. I yeah. Know. 
flashing does come with cost. Decks just don't play out as smooth, even if you feel like you have enough sources. You know? Would you play Bother in just a blue-black deck? Yeah, I think so, as a curve topper. It's not as good, because if we're stuck on lands, we can't play it. But our deck is going to kill creatures and steal creatures really well, but be not close out well at all. So I think this three thopter surveil two will be pretty good for us. Would you take Agent or Filched Falcon? I mean, it just depends. Like, if we have, like, seven, eight artifacts, I would take Filch. But if we only have, like, three, then we're never going to get to, you know, use that card. So then I would take Agent. Because Agent's solid. I don't think we have that much clue making, do we? I, like, think, we have, I, think, having, I think having three Scene of the Crimes really helps. Four Scene of the Crimes really helps. That does help, yeah. Because then we just Good need one. this makes one. We have one land in play, and then we play, like, one more artifact card. Yeah. No, it's a good point. It's a good point that when, um, like, a lot of our lands are artifacts, it's not going to be that hard. I mean, Case of the Filch Falcon, to me, is that simple, right? If you're going to turn it on every time, like, that's a good card. But if it's literally just making a clue, that's a terrible card. Like, why would yeah. you want to pay one and make a clue and pay two and sack it, right? Like, that yeah. that's not hard. I agree completely. Yeah, so overall, I don't think Case is very good. But if you have four clue lands and you have a few other things that make clues, probably it's just going to be a three mana four four flyer. Yeah. Yeah. Like, not on turn three, but it doesn't need to be on turn three. Okie doke. I think this deck really came together at the end here. Yeah, it's a pretty solid blue black. This card's so funny. I saw somebody play this card, and they, like, both both decked. Like, both players decked. It's, like... It's pretty like, funny. Because it's just, like, symmetrical. Yeah, okay. good rule of thumb for people at home. If a card says both players, you probably don't want it in limited, right? Yeah, because you put it down, and then both players get the benefit. Just... Yeah. Not ideal. You can build around that in extreme ways and construct it, but in limited, it's if it's both players. I mean, look, there are exceptions to this, of course, but as a good rule of thumb, if it's both players, it's probably not good. Okay, so just cutting the red cards here. We've got 42. I mean, four scene of the crimes is like no joke, gonna really help in the late game, I feel like. Yeah, I agree. I could even play we could even play 18 lands with four of these potentially. Yeah, 17 or 18, and uh, we're not going to flood. We have those to sack. Um, yeah, you got to get rid of the Shuffler. We don't yeah. have any. I, think, I always wonder if it's Snuffler or Shuffler, because like an N kind of looks like an H, and both are real words. Oh. But it's always You're a, right. snuff, it's a Snuffler. A snuffler. Yeah. He looks like he's I a call watering can. Yeah, I've called him Shuffler many times. Okie doke. So we have one more cut to make, or two cuts if we want to go up to... This is 12, 13, 17. If we want to go up to 18 lands, then it would be two cuts. This is an expensive card. Um... Yeah. Hotshot Investigators, I feel like, you know, we could play it, we could cut it. It's definitely cut a bull. Puzzle not um, could be cut. Puzzle not could be cut unless we have ways to use it for profit, which is more of a red ability. I'm not sure what we do or don't have. Um, this is bad. This card's bad. I really want to cut yeah, this. Yeah, that card should be in the deck, so you can okay. just cut so that already. Do you think we should go up to 18? I kind of like going to 18. We have this X spell. We have all these lands to sack. Don't yeah, I don't hate deal. it. I would just we could just get rid of one of our six drops. We still have endless stuff to spend our mana on. Yeah. If we're gonna do eighteen, uh, let's not get rid of like like bother. You know the three thopter one. Yeah. But like hotshot investigators and per persuasive interrogators are both super mediocre cards. I think. Yeah, I cut the investigators and left in the puzzle knot partly because filched falcon is good with the puzzle yeah. knot as well. I like and, that. Uh, yeah, I mean this deck looks pretty cool considering it's blue black, which isn't the best. We have a lot of good cards for the deck. We have this thing. We have this thing. And uh, we just like a lot of strong uncommons. We even have this guy. Yeah, this will um, be a good indicator of how blue black goes because I mean you have two coerce to kills, which is like the reason to play blue black. And then, mm -hmm. like you said, you also have robbery and Lazav. And decks like this tend to flood out, but that shouldn't really happen. Like with fuss bother and robbery and persuasive and and flot some jets. Some like we're not expecting flood to be an issue and foreseen of the crimes. So I think this will be a good test for how blue black does. Yeah, excellent. I'm excited to play the games. Thank you so much, Ben, for coming on as a guest, sharing all your insights about the format. Uh, where can people find you if they want to find more of your stuff? Hey, thanks, Nikolai. You know, I always love to come on. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I've got my YouTube channel, my Twitch channel. I actually stream twice over the past couple of weeks. I'm trying to stream about once a week, so not like the old excellent. days, but I uh, try to get that going regularly again. Um, pretty much my YouTube, my Twitch, my Twitter. You can find me everywhere at B-E-N-S underscore M-T-G. If you just yep. like search for that anywhere, I tr yeah. I've tried to use that same name in all places so that it would be easier to find. Yeah, excellent. Ben S underscore MTG. I'll link all that stuff in the description as well. Thanks so much to Ben for coming on, and uh, I'll see all of you other folks in the games. Before I get to the games, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support my content over at patreon.com slash Nikolai Volos. 
patrons are those individuals who enjoy my content and decide to give back, support the channel, and help me make more videos in the future. There's a free tier over on the Patreon, so you can learn a bit more about it before deciding if you do want to join, but I do want to give a special shout out to those who do join, especially those at the credits level. It really does make a big difference and helps me make more videos. If you are enjoying my content, Patreon is the best way to support the channel and help me make more content going forward. But without further ado, let's get to the games. Welcome to round one. We are going to keep this hand, and then we're going to hope that we can uh, get some wins. Because as I like to say, when you have a Hall of Famer help you draft, you take uh, none of the credit for the wins, but all of the credit for the losses. Okay, good start already. I think we'll just play this thing, get, get our graveyard set up for Extract a Confession. That was a lot of good spells. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Ouch. I think we have one way to get back cards from our graveyard. They have this guy. Draw and discard. So this is kind of our cool thing about our... If we do draw a case of the Filched Falcon, we'll now have it solved, which is good. This thing is two to flip, and then we can extract a confession as well. Oh, don't take out my... Uh, oh. Well, we'll get a swamp. Okay, they don't attack. That's good. I'm just going to use out cold here. Actually, no. I'm going to flip this and use extract confession. And then just pressure them. Give this menace. And now they're in trouble, because we have two out colds. We're kind of just tempoing them out here. Like, they can't really ever assemble blockers against this guy. Okay, so they're going to get some filtering to look for a shock or something. But then we'll just go to the late game with our clue makers. No, don't kill him. Oh. I'm going to kill this guy just so they can't get any looting going. I've got plenty of ways to stall out the game here. They're not going to kill me for quite some time. I have one bounce spell that can get this back to my hand. Sure. I'll let them hit me. Then I'll out cold whatever they play next. Just gonna play this nice and slow. I think I'm favored in the late game. I just have a lot of cards that are pretty good there. Decline, decline. Draw a card. I'm just buying time. It's funny, depending on what I steal here, this could actually be pretty good. They don't flip anything, though. Okay, now they have double blue. That opens up a lot of flipping possibilities. I'll just draw a card. That's the benefit of having these scenes of the crime. I'm just buying a lot of time here to just set everything up. Perfect. That can be killed. Or stolen. Now I'm worried about them having doppelgang. Sure. Mm 
Okay. Now I'm gonna have to find another artifact. I think I'm gonna have to play this carefully. I'm going to steal this thing. Okay. Because sometimes you can get some extra value that way. Like sometimes they'll have like a fairy snoop or undercity informant or some loot or like a bubble smuggler or something like that. And I did stop them from getting value with this. Locks on a eavesdropper is not the card I want to see, I'll be honest there. Might not be able to go for this, I might just have to start drawing some cards. Immediate punish, of course. No! Oh, this is not good. You know what I want is the robbery card, because I can totally, like, mill them out, I think. Two mana gain for. Stealing their guy when it had a stun counter on it was a bit ambitious. Should have just taken their eavesdropper, maybe. Definitely not attacking. I only have nine cards left, and they have 19. <sighs> Definitely gonna block block. No, I'm dead. Oh, man. That's tough. I just did not draw what I needed, I guess. If I'd taken one of these, I would have saved a lot of damage, just based on what that ended up being. That's probably the mistake that cost me the game. Yeah, I didn't think they'd add so much pressure so quickly and not run out of cards. 5, 10, 13. I mean, I... 14, 15, 16. I mean, I didn't draw that an absurd amount of lands. I have 18 and I drew 16 of them, so I have two left still. What I needed to do was just steal one of these with my first coerce to kill. And then I would have been able to take less damage because I can just trade off with their other guy. Because they would have flipped this thing. We got a little bit extra value, but I, the, the lands didn't matter. I was worried about it being something like big, like flipping into a 5-5 five, five, or flipping into another 6-7. Or something like that. Well, lesson learned. I'll, I'll do better next time, I think. Welcome to another round, another keep. Just rock solid hand. They're on a mulligan. I like this hand. I'm just gonna keep playing my tap lands, no reason to do anything too crazy.
I want the option to flip this, so I'm just going to play my Swamp and then play another Swamp. Because these are colorless right now. I could have offered that trade. I'll kill that. It is pretty bad against this. In that I could have like tried to use the two damage from this to kill them later, but man, all of my scenes of the crime. I'm gonna get a four two. It will cost me three life though. I'm just gonna play this first. I actually could kill them with clues this game. Two, four, six, eight poison. <laughs> Ten poison. <laughs> oh, gosh. So they're playing blue-black as well. Interesting. I know I'm getting, at the very least, a 4-2 flyer, which is pretty good here. At least 3 life, but that's okay. So this is the classic case. If you're the opponent and you have a kill spell or the option to play a blocker, you almost certainly want to play a kill spell. That's really bad for me. I think we can all agree on that front. I was hoping they didn't have that guy. I guess maybe I was just supposed to play Flotsam. So this essentially costs one to sack because it taps for the mana. So it's have two, four, six, three, four, five, six. So I can kill them next turn. I think. One clue, two clues, three clues, four clues. Oh my gosh, are we going to get the poison win? If they tap out, they just lose the poison. They can't get rid of this guy unless they have a murder. And they don't have double blue to shuffle him. Oh my gosh! Oh, we're being quite persuasive! Oh my gosh. It's a delicate dance at this point. Because if they can't ever tap low, gosh, scene of the crime is so good with interrogators. They're just dead. Oh my gosh. Kill their guy.
Oh my gosh, they died to poison! Yes! Oh, we got them! Yes! The poison kill! I didn't think it was possible! What a- Oh my gosh, that animation's gotta be the rarest. Rarest in the game. <laughs> yes! Oh, yes. Welcome to another round. We'll keep this. Man, we have this combo finish now with the poisoners. Oh, it's so satisfying. <laughs> oh, late game, just play poisoners, sack all our scenes of the crime that we've been waiting for. Oh my gosh, that was awesome. That was awesome. What a deck. What a performance. We just always have a scene of the crime. Having four of these is crazy. Crazy. This guy's not going to be a problem for a while. Green, white, eh? Sure. I'm gonna want to make sure I hit my land drops. Just gonna murder that guy. I could have played a Jaded Analyst too, but I want to do that for when I have this. Uh, I can wait one more land drop, play this, and have exit up. Or play this and extract a confession. Sure. This is the classic. I'm never 100% sure how this works. Where, like... I think when this dies, it... The trigger goes on the stack and I have to choose a target. And this trigger will be on the stack, but the 2-2 won't be made. No matter what order they resolve in. Okie doke. Hmm. I really want to steal this guy with my coerce to kill. So I'm going to bounce. Vichu Gazi. Because I don't want this to flip. And I really want to draw a land. No! This is a bummer. They're gonna get to flip their gateway. Because they can just sack this guy if I make them sack a creature. And they still have enough. I guess I could have kept the... Soul Enervation. It was a tight line.
Get the tap for an extra mana. Oh, it's so brutal. Not good. Well, shucks. This one's just unlucky. No need to use up my graveyard because I didn't want them to sack that one anyway. I think I'm just dead on board. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, this thing animates a land and we lose. Oh well. Oh, I don't even mean to them to go through the motions. That was just unlucky, I think. Um, I could have kept the removal spell, but it was really not great in that board state anyway. And I needed to hit a land to win. Welcome to another round. Back to the wall, but we've got a good hand here again. They're mulliganing. I think I really like that we're playing 18 lands in this deck because it really makes sure we just hit our land drops up to land five. Even though that didn't happen last game, I think it's still like the right approach. It is also possible I should have used my Extract Confession earlier. Like get rid of their Hedge Whisperer. Things like that. I feel like I was using my mana every turn though. Uh, a slow Mardu matchup. Feel like I'm okay with that. Whoa. They are really ramping up to something. Oh, five color. Four, all five colors by turn four. Oh, please. I don't want to get stuck here. I don't want to get stuck. Please. Don't, don't put me at four lands again. I'm traumatized. Sure. Nice, I'm glad I got rid of that. I liked this matchup more when I thought it was just a Mardu deck. I would have kind of liked to save this, but still okay. This is just a pretty obvious play. Attack, they get to investigate, so I'll bounce that, sure. Assassin's Trophy was a two for one against them. Sure, I'll keep that. That'll be a nice little value engine for me. Might as well play this first, see if I draw anything better. Then I'll soul innervation Lasav. I'm liking my chances here. I've got a nice big two for one coming up. Sure. My 5-6 outranks you. My interrogator beats your investigator in combat.
Woo! That's big. So they only have one card in hand now. That's pretty good for me. Might as well start with this. I'm running a bit low on removal. I also don't want to keep taking four. Four, four is pretty big. I'm going to kill it. Takes out one of my creatures. I already played a land, I'm so foolish. I'll just get some attacks in while the getting's good. That's a good card here. Make three one ones, surveil two. Okay, Filch is actually going to flip because of the Thopters, right? Okay, yeah, perfect. That's huge. Yeah, I think there's enough things. Once this gets flipped, it's pretty good. I need to turn one of my clues into a 4-4 flyer. I'll kill the face down card. I don't know what it is, but it's probably at least decent. Probably better than a 1 4 flyer. Yep, way better. Falcon is now solved. And they're dead on board. Yes! Oh my gosh! Everything coming together. That was awesome. We just get to the late game and then our lands can turn into extra cards and we're in good shape. Nice win. Welcome to another round. I'm going to keep this hand. It's sketchy because I can't cast a single spell, but... I just need an island or a disguise creature in the first like couple turns of the game. There's the disguiser. If I draw an island this turn, it would be really good for me.
I'll make him use a combat trick. That's not good for me. <laughs> I feel like this is just not going my way for some reason. I can't possibly fathom why uh, such a thing would happen, you know. <laughs> oh my gosh, just constantly missing my fifth land drop. It's not even a color situation because I can cast all my spells. Oh my gosh. I'm so dead. This is the whole reason I played 18 land. is because I'm losing two games because I'm missing my fifth land drop. I'm in so much trouble. I need to be able to jam this last turn and take their dog walker or whatever. Now I have the dog, Assassin. I could block their two morph disguisers. Yep. I was worried about that being one of their cards, but I can kill that with Extract a Confession. What I really need to do is draw a land so I can use this to make a 4-4. Four -four. So brutal, honestly. Just needed to draw a land so I could get a 4-4 out with this. I guess it needed to be an island, specifically. I'm in full survival mode here. I feel like regardless of how this winds out, like I'm two and two right now. If I go two and three, two, two and three, I think part of that is just like unfortunate how how things lined up. Okay. If 
the fact that I've used both my coerced is really unfortunate. <laughs> Sure. I'll go to two. I died a shock. Yeah, that was just unlucky. If we'd drawn our lands for that hand, I mean, it was a sketchy hand. Mulliganing is bad, though. And if we'd drawn our lands, uh, we would have been fine that game. I would have been able to, like, save my coerced to kills. I would have had way better lineups on how everything worked out. It was just like, they got to play literally every card in their hand, and I had all these things left over. And this card especially is useless without a bunch of extra mana. I kept a three lander and just missed my fifth land drop. Because if on turn 5 I can steal their thing with Coerce to kill, like their 3-1 Vigilance, I can stabilize much easier. Oh, man. Well, that's unfortunate. 2 and 3, though. Not the end of the world. Not a terrible result. It's just the games that I lost. I mean, I lost two games to missing my 5th land drop in my 18 land control deck. And I think I was on the draw both those games, potentially. And then I lost one game to... Uh, I don't even remember. But I just remember it being uh, kind of not really... a. Uh, Oh, it was that grindy game where they uh, just like went through the late game and I kind of flooded. Anyway, pretty fun draft. We got to kill someone with interrogators, which was a lot of fun. And I do hope you enjoyed being able to hear the insights from Ben Stark because he really is one of the best drafters in the world. And I always learn a lot when he comes on as a guest. So hopefully you uh, were able to learn something as well. Yeah, be sure to check out his content and all his stuff. I'll link that in the description as well. Huge shout out to him for coming on as a guest. And I hope you did enjoy this video. If you made it all the way till the end of the video, in the comments section down below, leave hashtag, <laughs> hashtag clues, because this was pretty much the clues deck in terms of uh, killing someone with clues. I didn't want to, I don't know. <laughs> or it, it was a lot of fun. Um, so, um, or hashtag Stark clues, because Ben Stark was our guest. But yeah, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I will talk to you next time.